Hi, welcome to the next video uh, in the series. Uh, the last one we were dealing with the thoracic limb. Uh, in this video we're going to deal with the pelvic limb. And again we're just going to talk through surface anatomy, the major structures, uh, without going into too much detail, uh, and just pointing out where everything is. Uh, so let's crack on with the top bone. The top bone uh, in, and the, the pelvic limb is the pelvis. Okay, and the pelvis is made up of three bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. The ilium, the ischium, and the pubis in the unborn fold start off like as three separate bones. They fuse together uh, before birth to make up the, uh, the pelvis. Uh, here, these two big prominences here are the ilium, uh, the ischium at the back here, Okay, the pelvis joins uh, across the middle, again, deep inside uh, the horse. There are two joints at the top here. They attach the, the pelvic limb to the spine that runs through the middle, okay, and they're known as the sacriliac joint. There's a bone in the spine here called the sacrum, okay, and the sacrum and the ilium make up the sacriliac joint. That's where uh, it gets its, its term from. And they are two synovial joints here at the top. Inside, you can't see it because it's underneath all this muscle here, okay, but inside there, there is a bone called the femur, and at the head of the femur there's a ball, and the ball goes in the socket made up of the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis, a thing called the acebulum, which is a hole, and the head of the femur goes in there, so on, on the, there's a ball and socket joint on either side, and there's a sacriliac joint on either side, and this is the pelvis. The next bone is a big massive long bone that runs down here and it is the femur. Our equivalent is this bone here uh, on our leg and it is the largest bone, uh, the largest long bone uh, in, in, in the horse's body and it is the femur and it runs down here to the next bone which is uh, the patella. Okay, the patella is the horse's true kneecap, has the ability to lift up slightly and lock itself, part of the, uh, the stay apparatus of, the, of the, the hind limb. The next bone is another long bone which travels down here and it's called the tibia and at the back of the tibia there's a small rudimentary bone called the fibula. So we've got the tibia and the fibula which run down and take us to uh, this joint here which is the hot joint. Now the hot joint, like the knee joint, uh, they are quite similar but the hot joint is slightly more complicated because the bones are slightly more offset and there's a few more of them. Uh, certainly as far as learning knee and hock, knee is far easier to learn uh, than the hock. Okay? But the, the, the main bones of the hock, we've got this one here which forms the point of the hock here, is called the calcaneus. At the end of the tibia there is a bone called the talus which is like a half round bone, it's got two ridges and a groove in the middle of it, okay, and it, it articulates with the tibia, and it's the high motion joint inside the hock, or the tarsal cural joint, or the tibiotarsal joint, uh, that they all uh, mean the same thing. Underneath that we've got uh, another bone here called the central tarsal bone, and below that we've got the third tarsal bone, we've got the fourth tarsal bone running up the side, and the second tarsal bone is on the inside, round the back, uh, slightly. So that is uh, the hock joint uh, and there are four joints inside the hock. The top one is high motion and they get progressively lower and lower motion and the bottom two are actually, uh, re they really are quite low motion joints. Uh, once we get below the hock, it's, it's very similar to uh, the forelimb except this time in the forelimb this bone is called the third metacarpal, in the hind limb it's called the third metatarsal. Uh, and obviously the second and fourth metatarsal rather than metacarpal but we're getting into positional terms now uh, but the hind limb are tarsal bones in the forelimb they are carpal bones uh, but the anatomy is pretty much the same same with the tendons uh, there's a slight difference in the extensor tendons which I'm not going to go into in this video really uh, but they are slightly different but the collateral ligaments the sesamoidian ligaments they're all the same very very similar there are a few tiny tiny differences uh, but really nothing to, to write home about. So below the knee and the hock, the anatomy is very, very similar. Above, then it does change slightly. Uh, and if you're recognising some of the, for the horse owners out there, if you are recognising some of these names like femur and tibia and fibula, uh, you would be correct in doing that. As, as humans, we're mammals. Horses are mammals. We do share the same anatomy. The anatomy is called the same thing. Uh, it's just arranged slightly differently for between humans and horses. So... Uh, I hope that helps to uh, explain some of the, uh, the some of the basic anatomy uh, of the hind limb. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Again, any comments you, you want to leave, then I'll, I'll try and reply to uh, any questions you may have. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video soon. Thank you.